the uproar over the disappearance of about 6 billion US dollars worth of deposits of more than 400,000 depositors in several village banks in Henan has lasted for more than two months, and depositors are still unable to take out their deposits. Thousands of Henan village bank victims from all over the country gathered in front of the People's Bank of China in Zhengzhou, Henan province, in the early hours of July 10th to protest. According to a live video sent by protesters, Henan authorities sent nearly 1,000 police officers and unidentified personnel to besiege the demonstrators. A large number of plainclothes officers at the scene are said to be city police and gangs hired by the government. In the morning of the 10s, posts about the protest can be seen on social media, and by noon, the cell phone signal at the protest site was blocked off, and related posts on Weibo had been completely deleted. A large number of plainclothes officers suddenly rushed to the protesters who were sitting in front of the bank to demonstrate, and began to clear the scene using pepper spray and beating the protesters. It is reported that the authorities deployed about 40 large buses. The depositors were forcibly dragged onto the buses and pulled away, with police on guard. The authorities then quickly dispatched cleaning trucks to wash off the blood stains on the ground with high-pressure water guns. On July 11th, in view of the pressure from various parties, the Henan Banking and Insurance Regulatory Bureau and the Henan Provincial Local Financial Supervision Bureau issued an announcement stating that the principal of the customers in four involved village banks will be advanced in batches. The first batch of advances will be made on July 15th, 2022, and the advances were made to customers with a single consolidated amount of 50,000 yuan inclusive or less from a single institution. For a single institution with a single combined amount of 50,000 yuan or more, advances will be made one after another, and the arrangements for advances will be announced separately. As we talked about in the previous video, Henan officials put all the blame on Liu Yi, the real controller of Henan New Fortune Group, who had fled to the U.S., and planned to frame the victimized depositors into participants of financial fraud and illegal fundraising, so that they do not need to take responsibility and let the depositors bear all the losses. In fact, the actual Henan authorities are carrying it out in this way step by step. We see in this latest announcement that the victimized depositors are described as customers of the bank's external business and not recognized as bank depositors. Recently, a number of depositors disclosed to the Chinese mainland media that the original deposit items deposited on the Du Xiaoman financial platform are now shown as financial products on the platform, and Du Xiaoman customer service responded that this was changed by the bank. The news had increased depositors' anxiety. In addition, in June, the authorities held several Henan officials accountable after the health codes of the victimized depositors were assigned red. But on July 7, a number of out-of-town depositors' health codes also turned red. The Henan Health Commission responded that it was a problem of system switching. This abnormal behavior once again shocked depositors and netizens. On July 5th, some depositors found that all the Henan Village Bank apps could not be logged in, the electronic cards were cleared, and the account balances could not be checked. Beijing lawyer and blogger Zhang Jie Observation commented, The transactions between depositors and banks are all conducted online, unlike in the past where there were vouchers and receipts. If the depositor's money in the system is gone, the problem will be very serious. How to collect evidence is a big problem. He criticized that the banks are becoming increasingly unethical, which will result in an entire financial system security crisis. On July 8th, a number of depositors of New Oriental Village Bank in Kaifeng, Henan, found a number of unidentified fund inflows and outflows, but none of them were done by the depositors themselves. One depositor named Wang Ming said he opened an account in June 2018 and deposited 100,000 yuan, and the account balance was abnormal since the second month. The abnormal balance was more than 2 million at first, but later became 20 million and 30 million. The anomaly lasted for up to two and a half years. The depositors expressed confusion about the abnormal account flow. I wonder if it was a technical error 
or was there money laundering or other reasons? The incident at Henan Village Bank is still unresolved, and since July 6, many people in mainland China have sent videos saying that their bank accounts have been frozen for no reason, and that they cannot spend or transfer money out, but can deposit money. A video posted online shows a bank service hall packed with people, all trying to unlock their bank cards. Bank staff explained that this was to prevent money laundering or illegal transactions. The banks that have frozen their cards include China Merchants Bank, Bank of China, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, China Construction Bank, Agricultural Bank of China, and Ping An Bank, which include all of China's four largest state-owned banks. The areas involved include Guangdong, Fujian, Anhui, Zhejiang, Jiangsu, and Shanghai. Such a large scope and the fact that this anomaly is happening in some large banks is even more worrying. The risk of China's banking sector has become a hot topic recently. In fact, the problem of people having difficulty in withdrawing money and being limited to the credit limit has been seen many times this year in various places. Starting from June 1st, the day of the lockdown lift, many banks in Shanghai saw massive queues for withdrawals. Some people even ran to the queue at 2 in the morning. Something similar happened in Beijing in May, with depositors lining up in front of the banks. All the ICBCs in Chaoyang, Fengtai, and Haidian districts of Beijing were closed. Difficulties in withdrawing money also occurred in Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Guangdong. On June 19th, a depositor went to the agricultural bank of Jiujiang Town, Guangdong Province, to withdraw money, and the bank had a limit of 1,000 yuan withdrawal for no reason. Some netizens left a message saying that the agricultural bank of Shenzhen is also limiting the daily withdrawal amount to 1,000 yuan. Recently, a video circulated on the internet showing that the Shengjing Bank in Liaoning Province also has people holding banners to fight for their rights. The banner reads that the bank is not honoring large deposit dues. Evergrande Group used to be the largest shareholder of Shengjing Bank. Previously, Liaoning almost had a provincial-wide financial system risk. Since 2021, 63 top leaders of 100 small and medium-sized banks in the province have been arrested. Several key officials of the banking supervisory agency were also investigated. Many small and medium-sized banks of Shengjing Bank and Bank of Jinzhou have experienced major risks. Recently, Liaoning Province merged 12 local city commercial banks into Liaoshen Bank, and there are plans to continue merging banks such as Anshan and Hulu Dao in the next two years. The Liaoning Provincial Department of Finance issued 13.5 billion yuan of special bonds for small and medium-sized banks in April to, quote, transfuse blood to local banks. On June 16, there was a run on Dandong Bank in Liaoning Province, and a large number of people lined up at the bank to withdraw money. On July 6, two village banks in Hebei announced their dissolution, and whose business and property were acquired by Zhang Jiako Bank. Some commentators believe that this is because the financial situation of the two banks may be insolvent, or the asset quality is very poor and they may collapse at any time, so the authorities will dissolve and liquidate in advance. In fact, before Hebei disbanded the two village banks, there were also cases of multiple village banks being merged in other regions. In addition, negative news of small bank equity auctions and violations continue to appear in the newspapers. On July 1st, the shares of Zhaozhuang Bank were auctioned at a price that was more than 40% lower than the appraisal price. In June, the equity of a number of agricultural and commercial banks and smaller banks suffered abortive auctions and were administratively fined for illegal operations. Recently, the Bank of Nanjing, which has a total assets of 1.75 trillion yuan, has encountered trouble again. The Bank of Nanjing is a joint stock city commercial bank. In addition to the state-owned shares, the International Finance Corporation and BNP Paribas has also invested in it. It was listed in 2007, and according to data, the Bank of Nanjing has initiated the formation and shareholding of a number of village banks, and is also associated with rural banks in Henan. 
On the evening of June 29th, Lin Jingran, president of Bank of Nanjing, suddenly resigned. The position of president is temporarily held by Chairman Hu Shengrong. On the same day, the official website of Nanjing Municipal Government showed the appointment of Deng Zhiyi, president of China Eastern Asset Management Corporation, as vice mayor of Nanjing to assist in the work of preventing and resolving major financial risks, and to assist in the division of the Bank of Nanjing. Affected by the news of the resignation of the president, the Bank of Nanjing, listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange, was down 6.46% at closing on June 30th. Immediately, the Bank of Nanjing issued another announcement, saying that the bank will launch a new seal on July 1st. This made people feel that there was something fishy going on even more. On July 1st, another incident occurred when Fu Mingfei, an analyst at Western Securities, broke the news about the debt crisis of the Bank of Nanjing. It is reported that Fu Mingfei said in the WeChat moments that the hole in the Bank of Nanjing is very large, but not because of institutional investment problems, but because of the debt crisis caused by the government's culpability. If not handled well, Jiangsu government will have a shakeup. Fu Mingfei also analyzed that the core assets of Bank of Nanjing are not depositors, but pensions, social security, and provident funds. Bank loans to the public sector are mainly real estate credit and industrial funds and government projects, while the bank's capital reserve is only a few billion. Once the thunder strikes, the bank may go bankrupt. This information from professionals has had a very big impact. Subsequently, Fu Mingfei was quickly dismissed by Western Securities. On July 3rd, the Xuanwu branch of the Nanjing Public Security Bureau issued a police notice that Fu Mingfei had been given a security management punishment. Bank of Nanjing has come forward three times to dispel the rumors, but the news is getting hotter and hotter. Many mainland people have been deceived, and many people firmly believe that the so-called rumors are actually predictions. The various abnormal phenomenon of the Bank of Nanjing have caused the public to speculate that something big is about to happen. According to media reports, the Bank of Nanjing crisis is also related to the debt crisis of Evergrande Group. According to the news at the end of 2020, Evergrande has more than $300 billion in debt, involving more than 128 banks, including the Bank of Nanjing. However, compared to Henan Rural Bank, Nanjing Bank is also endorsed by the Nanjing government and the central bank of the CCP. So the government can still maintain stability for the time being, but who can guarantee that there will not be a bigger crisis in the future? In addition, the debt crisis in the real estate industry has gradually spread to the financial industry. In an interview with the news media, Charlene Chu, a senior analyst at Sanford C. Bernstein & Co.'s Autonomous Research, said that it is estimated that 30 real estate companies in mainland China have defaulted, and the total debt of these companies is close to 1 trillion US dollars. While bank loans to property development companies are secured by collateral, the debt situation could get worse if lenders reassess that the collateral is low in value. As mentioned in our previous video, sales of real estate in China continue to fall at the moment. Developers are having trouble making returns. And when debt service peaks, insolvency occurs, and banks incur huge losses on the loans they lend out once they go bankrupt. At this time, some of the weaker small and medium-sized banks may collapse. In addition, there is also news that China's housing loan foreclosure has reached 40 million units, and the number of foreclosure houses has reached 10 million. We cannot verify the authenticity of this figure, because China's statistics have always been murky and fraudulent. Previously, the media reported publicly that 2 million houses will be foreclosed in 2021. This year, due to the impact of the pandemic, the unemployment situation will become more serious, and the foreclosure numbers will definitely continue to increase, but the exact numbers is still unknown. Current affairs commentator Wen Zhao analyzed that the arrival of the wave of mortgage non-payment is an insurmountable blow to banks because it creates a structural contradiction. However, if the wave of mortgage non-payment is allowed to continue like this, it will also hit the banks very heavily. As soon as prices drop, 
For the customers who buy houses at high prices, the remaining loan balance of the house will be higher than the market price of the house. The house will become negative equity, and the default rate of the mortgage will increase accordingly. Therefore, these two problems cannot be resolved at the same time. So, what is the solution? They can only watch the default rate of mortgages increase because house prices have fallen a lot, and all the mortgages in the form of houses will depreciate in value, and the bad debt rate of banks will soar. This danger is more urgent and needs to be avoided. However, if the wave of mortgage cuts is allowed to continue like this, it will also hit the banks very heavily. The balance of personal housing loans at the end of 2021, accounting for 19.9 percent of all bank loans, is still quite a large percentage. Under the CCP's various industry crackdowns and zeroing out COVID policies, China's unemployment rate is high, and many small and medium-sized businesses are struggling to survive. And now the real estate industry is experiencing a succession of debt crises and local fiscal revenues declining sharply. Once the financial crisis breaks out in banks, people's deposits will disappear or cannot be withdrawn at will. The banks and the government collude with each other in the name of maintaining order, which has already led to public discontent. As more and more crises break out in the property market, local institutions, and eventually the entire financial system, it will surely shake the rule of the Chinese Communist Party.